When I returned home, I found the shoes of another woman in the hallway. I had been away suffering through long hours of difficult delivery, and was relieved to be finally home with my newborn. My few days old daughter was sleeping soundly in my arms. However, my heart was thumping faster and faster despite her calm breathing. I quietly walked into the back of the house, trying not to make sound with my footsteps. It was probably the only relief that my daughter was asleep. When I got to the bedroom door, I heard my husband and a mysterious woman chatting happily. I was choked by the surge of shock, and my mind went blank. In the midst of it all, I managed to keep my sanity with the presence of a tiny new life in my arms. I felt sorry for putting her in the middle of such a painful situation, and apologized to her in my head. I gently opened the door and looked through the narrow crack to see what was going on inside. There, they were. Oh my God, it's her! My husband Jordan and I met at a volunteer group. My friend Christy invited me to go with her. And there he was. He was friendly and funny, and talked to us frankly. Not only was he a good communicator, but he was also very active in volunteer activities. He was willing to take up projects that were said to be hard and stressful. He was admired by people around him, and of course, I was one of them. Because of his intended experience. He had no trouble getting the job he wanted. I followed his example and did my best in both volunteering and studying. As a result, I landed a job in the firm I wanted. While celebrating with Christy at a bar, we bumped into Jordan for the first time since he graduated. I was so excited to see the guy I had admired for the first time in a long while. That I asked him out to a movie on the spot. He happily took up my offer, and we started going out from the day we had the first date. A year later, we were married. Christy was surprised at the speed, but I was confident that he would be the one for me. Although I had little experience with men, I felt strangely comfortable with him. It's delicious. You're the best cook. I saw this recipe on SNS and thought it looked good. I'm so lucky that you like cooking. It's nothing compared to your study. It's hard, isn't it? I nodded as I gobbled the gumbo he prepared for me. I was in the middle of preparing for the difficult certification exam. Since we both had a job, we had divided the housework between him for the cooking and me for the cleaning. But I had been leaving the most to him. I was planning to get myself back to the chores after the exam was over. It must have been tiring to take care of the house while working, but he had taken up the extra without a grim look on his face. I was glad to have found a wonderful man. After that, I passed the exam with flying colors. He was happy for me. And I was able to earn more income with the certification. However, our relationship took an unexpected turn. One day, I felt strangely ill and left work early to go to the doctor. There, the doctor told me the unthinkable. I'm back. Hey, Han. As soon as I heard Jordan's voice, I rushed to the front door. He cocked his head to the side as he took off his jacket. What's up? You're in a good mood. Of course, we are having a baby. The reason for my poor health was pregnancy. When the doctor told me, I was surprised, but also overjoyed. Having kids was always on my mind. I was earning more money than ever, so there was no financial strain. I 
expect Jordan to be ecstatic to hear the news, but his face turned grave. Um, congratulations! He walked into the living room, leaving me stunned and disappointed. I told myself that men were like that. As the time went by, feelings of discomfort grew thicker and thicker. I worked until the last minute, even though my health was poor. My colleagues told me not to push myself too hard, but I wanted to work as hard as I could. I loved my job that much. Jordan was also in the midst of his busy season, and we both neglected housework. The madness had reached the limit, so I suggested we hire a housekeeper. He then lashed out, "Don't waste our money. Why don't you quit your job and do the housework?" I couldn't believe my ears at his unexpected reply. From that day on, he stopped doing any chores out of spite. I honestly didn't understand what was going on with him, but I also didn't have the time or energy to discuss it with him. I didn't want to make things worse by saying unnecessary things. If that was the case, I told myself to do the best. I started to take care of the house in parallel with my work. I was sure that he would return to his sweet ways after the birth. One weekend, while pushing my exhausted body to vacuum, I saw something wedged in the sofa. It was Jordan's phone. I picked it up and was about to put it on the table when I heard a yell behind me. I turned around in surprise. And so Jordan glaring at me hard. Don't look at my things, so naughty. I'm sorry. I was just moving it. Whatever, just give it back to me. He snatched the phone away from my hand so viciously that I fell to the floor. He sighed, in frustration. Don't be the drama queen just because you're pregnant. My mom said that she worked hard while she was pregnant with me. You're so spoiled. His words felt like a slap on my face, and my mind went blank. Did he really need to say that much? He was disgruntled and stared at me coldly. I feel sorry for the child, having such a pathetic mother. I'm sorry. I reflexively apologized when the child was mentioned. I was going to give birth to and raise a human being. There was no time to discourage or hurt. I apologize for looking at your phone, so don't talk to me like that. Are you blaming me now? You used to be cute, but you've changed. I looked down. Hearing the insult coming out of him, the next day, I fainted from anemia at work. I had the will to continue working, but I seemed to reach my limit. I talked to my boss that day and set a date for my resignation. A few weeks later, I visited the hospital again. You're anemic, so there's a good chance you have a difficult natural birth. Is that so? Yes, and it's not so good that you're a little overweight. Try to exercise more and eat healthy. I had countless ideas of what was being said. Jordan's food was tasty, but it was often oily and heavy, with high in fat and sugar, the kind of food that so-called men enjoyed. I normally gulp them all, justifying as storing stamina for busy work. After I became pregnant and started cooking for myself, I thought I had kept the amount in moderation, but it was still not enough. Jordan also looked at me with disdain when he saw me. I wondered if the change in his attitude was also due to my weight gain. We hardly spoke to each other anymore, and our relationship had grown cold. Although I wanted to improve the situation. I had no idea what to do. A few days later, I woke up to find Jordan asleep on the sofa. I could smell the faint odor of alcohol, 
which made me assume he had come home early in the morning. As I wondered if he had taken out his clients, I covered him with a blanket and noticed something slip out of his pocket. It was a card for a motel known for people to conduct shady business in. Looking at the black card, which gave off an air of unnecessary sophistication, I instantly felt the blood rush to my head. Wake up! What the? Leave me alone! Leave you alone? What the heck is this? I'm getting a divorce. His eyes swarmed as I held the card out in front of him. That was the best proof of all. As if the flood gauge was opened, my accumulated dissatisfaction poured out of my mouth. Once it started, I couldn't stop it, and the words just flooded out. Tears began to stream down my face, and I felt sorry for myself. I couldn't help but cry out for my brother. We were tight knit, and he was always there for me whenever I was in need. It was a remnant of my childhood. I still called out to him when my emotions were running high. I knew I had to stop doing that, but when I was in panic, my mouth moved before I could think. I expected Jordan to laugh at me, but his face turned pale. To my surprise, I'm sorry. It's my fault. I apologize for everything I've done, and I start doing the housework. Please don't mention divorce. It's going to cause trouble for your brother. So, please. He got down on his knees and apologized right then and there. Although I was done by the sudden turn of events, looking at the top of his head made me angry again. I called a divorce lawyer anyway afterward, and the day ended there. A few months later, I was in the cab headed for the hospital. Contractions started in the morning, so I ran some errands first and headed straight there. Although I had been taking care to improve my health since the doctor's warning, I was going to end up in the hospital for a bit longer. I sent a message to Jordan, asking him to take care of the house and lean back against the seat. Since that day, he had done his best to take care of the house as he promised, and had made my life a lot more comfortable. I was well aware that it wasn't because he cared about me. I knew that, so I didn't even ask him to be at the delivery. I was going to give birth alone and raise the child by myself. I was determined to do so, and pat my stomach. After the birth and rest, I returned home. My daughter was sleeping comfortably in my arms. When I went inside, I found. As I had expected, the shoes of another woman. I felt sorry to put in her in the middle of such a painful situation, and apologized to her in my head. Then I went straight to the bedroom and found Jordan and Christy lying naked on the bed. They both froze for a moment, then started freaking out. Oh no! This isn't what you think, honey. Listen to me. They ranted and raved, but it was no longer any of my business. I'll contact you about the alimony and child support later through my lawyer. In the meantime, can you two strangers get out of my house? This is my house. Strangers? Yes, strangers. Come on. What are you talking about? This is my house too, and I'm not leaving. Anyway, I know you had an affair. If it's not my kid, then there's no reason for me to pay child support. Jordan puffed out his nostrils. Christy, who was a nurse, told him that the gestation period was forty weeks, so mine was off. He counted backward from my due date and realized that I got pregnant on the day he went on his business trip. That meant that my daughter must have been another man's and not his. 
He was proud of himself after he said it all, but Christy was looking down in silence. That was not surprising. He was making a big mistake. Seriously? You need to take up proper sex education. Christy, you're a nurse. Please teach him the right stuff. After seeing her tremble in fear, I turned to Jordan. I explained that the due date was not from the day of implantation, but calculated from the first date of the mother's last menstrual period. I also added that it was hardly ever right on time. There was no way that Christy didn't know that. In other words, she knew and gave him the misinformation, probably to discredit me. Were you trying to get us divorced by flaming me and try to get a share of the property? No way! If you could get a scoop on the popular tax consultor having an affair and getting a divorce, you might have been able to get a lot of money, right? I became a licensed tax accountant while working and then turned my career into writing. I had been writing easy to understand articles about finances and my name was slowly gaining recognition in the industry. I even received an offer to publish a book. Jordan must have noticed that I was making more money than him and was probably planning to take advantage of that. He finally realized the situation he was in. Anyway, we're still married. Oh, about that. I've already served you with divorce papers. What? His stupid face almost cracked me up, but I managed to hold it together. The day I went into labor, I stopped my lawyer's office before going to the hospital. I had already hired a professional to find out the other woman and collect evidence of the affair. The dash cam recorded their candid conversation such as, How stupid is she not realizing about us? Too bad to divorce, she's loading now. I found out that he was also spending our savings on her. Get it? My brother bought his house, and it's in my name. You strangers who got nothing to do with it are not allowed to stay here. If you don't start moving, I will call my lawyers and the police. I threw their belongings out the window as I declare. The two finally understood the gravity of the situation and began to get dressed. I shouted at them as they walked out with their tail between their legs. I won't go easy on the alimony. A few months later, Hey, you're on the TV again. This isn't a muscle training show. I'm a muscle lawyer, you know. Look, Vicky, my biceps. Don't teach her weird things. My daughter, Victoria, and I are living near my parents now. My brother comes over almost every day, and he's always so smitten with Vicky. I bet his client would be shocked to see the talented lawyer sought after on TV melts at the side of my niece. After that, my brother sent legal documents with a DNA certificate to Jordan's parents. It was proof that Vicky was his legitimate daughter. He also sent a statement of alimony and child support, as well as the reimbursement for the use of the savings. Jordan knew that my brother could easily do something like this, so he simply apologized when I mentioned divorce that day. Although he and Christy resented my brother and left slanderous comments on his SNS and blog, they were immediately sued for defamation. Furthermore, a group of people active on the internet called the Identification Team pinned them down right away. I am not as famous as my brother, but I am recently become known to the public. A popular blogger and the easy to understand tax consoler, Sky's ex husband is a criminal? When I saw the article title, I almost fell over. Christy was also identified in the article. 
and the image of them she had uploaded to her SNS in the past was revealed. She received bashings and has now quit her job as a nurse. The article prompted my fellow members to the volunteer group to contact me. They say that Jordan had a bad reputation since he was a student. Although he was good to his juniors, he pushed troublesome jobs to his peers. He also always took the initiative in doing the most prominent jobs. The company he wanted to work for was putting a lot of effort into volunteer work, so he only volunteered to score points to get hired. The only reason he was kind to me was because he was a womanizer. He had a tendency to easily get involved with a woman. He is now lining up for a soup kitchen organized by a volunteer group. I hear there's a woman next to him, so it must be Christy. Seriously, I had no sense in choosing a guy. If you're going to get married again, get a guy like me, sis. Says a never married single guy. Biki is beaming happily in his arms. The future I'm going to share with this girl has just begun.